In today's lesson, we're going to make the managed context. This will allow us to connect our managed object that we made last time to our PostgreSQL database. Once we have all that, we'll be able to do queries. Let's get started. Go over to channel.dart. At the top of the class, let's make a member variable. Its type will be managed context, and we'll call it context. Now we'll initialize it in the prepare method. But to make the manage context, first we need the data model in the database. To get the data model, you can use manage data model dot from current mirror system. The from current mirror system method goes and finds it in the project. In order to help Aqueduct find our managed object, let's import it into the controller, the words controller. We're not going to use it right now, but we'll use it later. So it's package, dart server, model, and word.dart. Okay, so we've got the data model. Now we need the database. Type final, we'll call our database database and it will be a PostgreSQL persistent store. We'll get it from connection info, and that info includes the username, password, host, port, and database name. Let's reformat these lines. Option Command L on a Mac. For the username, our username is words user. password. I don't remember it. Let's go look. So when we created the user, we gave that user this password here. Put that in quotes. The host is localhost. The port is 5432. This is the default port for PostgreSQL. The database name is words. Okay, now we can make our managed context from the data model and database. So context equals managed context with data model and database passed in. All right. So that would work, but I don't really want to have all this information exposed like this because I'm going to check this into GitHub and I don't want the password in the open. So let's move all this into a configuration file. If you look over on the left, you can see config.yaml. Right now, this file's blank. So let's move our information over here. We'll call the main key here database. The host is localhost. The port is 5432. The username is words user. The password is, let me go copy it. And the database name is words. Okay, that's on the file. Now we need to get that file from code. To do that, let's make a new class. We'll call it words config. I'm just sticking it at the very bottom of our controller.dart file. It will extend configuration. Make a constructor, and in the constructor, we'll pass in the path to the file and give that path to the superclass. So we'll convert the string to a file.
and then it will have a property called database configuration and we'll call that database. The word database here matches what we called it in config.yaml. Okay, now let's get the configuration. Final config equals words config. Now we'll pass in the path. We can find the path by typing options dot configuration file path. Options is a member of application channel and configuration file path will get the information from config.yaml. All right, now we can replace all this. So we can use config.database dot username. This is config dot database dot password. Then we have config dot database dot host the port config dot database dot port. And finally, config.database.database name. All right, now we don't have all that information exposed. Let's make sure the PostgreSQL server is running. We can check its status with pg control status command. And yes, the server is running. If it weren't running, we could start it with the start command like we did last time. We're going to make a migration file now that will build the database. If you go over to migration and tooling in the Aqueduct documentation and scroll down to generate migration files, you can see the command Aqueduct DB generate. Let's run that now. That's going to find our model class, our word.dart, and it's going to create the database schema from it. So it created a migration file. That should be up here. There it is, migrations. And there in the upgrade method, we can see that it made the migration schema. If you don't see the schema, Make sure that you imported your model, the words.dart file, in your words controller. We can use the seed method to give some initial data to our database. Let's create some rows. We'll create a list of maps. The map will have the word and the content. So the first word we'll insert is horse and the content remember this is a document which means it's json so we'll surround everything in single quotes then we'll have a json string and remember in a json string you need to use double quotes for the key we'll just use one key for now and we'll call that description and just describe our word. So what is a horse? It's a large animal you can ride. Okay, finish off this map. Let's duplicate that with command D. Let's do a few more examples. Cow, camel, sheep, goat. What's a cow? We'll just change a little large animal you can milk. A large animal with humps. A camel, sheep, 
as wool. And a goat has horns, we'll say. Let's see, sheep and goats aren't large, let's make them small. Small animal with wool, small animal with horns. All right. Add a semicolon. And let's add these to the database. So for row in rows, we'll wait for each row to be added. So we'll use await database dot store execute. And this will execute a SQL command. This is raw SQL we're using here. That's important for a migration file. If we were using a method or query class to help us insert the data, if that changed, it might mess up our migration. We want it to stay constant. So that's why we're using raw SQL here. Okay, so we're going to insert into Word underscore capital W small ORD. If we go up to the table name, we can see that's the name. And we also have ID, word, and content for the column names. We're going to insert into word and content. And the values are, we're going to use a placeholder here, word, at sign word, comma, at sign, content. And then we'll add those dynamically. So the substitution values are for word, we'll use row The key is word, and for content, we'll get the content from the row. The key is content. Great, that will pre-populate our table with some values. We haven't actually changed the database yet. The migration file just tells Aqueduct how to do it. So let's actually do that now. Head back over to the Aqueduct documentation. Scroll down until you see upgrading a database schema. And you can see the format for the command here. So we're going to run aqueduct db upgrade dash dash connect. Then we're going to pass the information it needs to do the upgrade. Postgres colon slash slash words user is the username. Password, let me copy that in. At the host is localhost, colon, the port is 5432, slash, the database name is words. All right, let's run that. It's using the migration file to actually add the table and create the schema, and then add our pre-populated data. Great, it was successful. There's one more thing to do, I almost forgot. Let's go to git ignore and add in config.yaml because we don't want to give our password away to the internet. All right, the database is connected. In the next lesson, we're going to look at using our managed context to make queries on the database.